Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, everybody, and welcome to this presentation. Um, I'm presenting on behalf of CRIS Zambia, which is implementing a project in Eastern Zambia and the Central Zambia. Um, so this presentation is entitled Leveraging Agriculture Development Agents to Strengthen Seed, system and seed Systems and Link Farmers to Markets in Zambia. Um, the project works through community entrepreneurs, whom we call agriculture development agents. And um, let me explain in brief uh, the business model for the ADA, for the ADAs. So the ADA is at the center of it all. The box that you are seeing in the middle, it is representing the, the ADA. So the ADAs, they perform DAO functions. Uh, the first one is that they produce and sell certified seeds to the farmers within the communities and beyond. And they also aggregate grain from the farmers that uh, buy their seed and use it to produce the grain. Um, to do this, uh, they receive support from the project. When we just started, the project facilitated them to acquire or facilitated them with, the, provided them with the early generation seed. Um, when we say seed, we are talking about two crops here, uh, soya beans and pigeon pea. So um, the other support that we provide as a project is that we link them, we link them to the markets for the produce. And we also provide capacity building to their farmers and themselves. This capacity building is in form of training and um, in agro-enterprise development and agronomical practices. And we also do field monitoring. Then we have partners that we work with. The first one is the um, Caritas Chipata. The Caritas Chipata is part of the project and they do most of the actual field work while CRIS provides the technical support. Um, the other partner we have is ZARI, Zambia Agriculture Research Institute. Uh, the first role that they do is that they provide the early generation seed. Uh, they've got the breeders there who supply us with the early generation seed that uh, our others need to produce the seed. Then we also have SCCI, SCCI does the seed inspection, seed registration, and seed certification. Um, in addition to what I said concerning Zari, uh, Zari also does the research, so we get advice on which varieties that we can uh, produce. So they uh, give us also, Zari also provides advisory role in terms of seed production. You may know that to produce crops like pigeon pea, you need a lot of uh, plant protection chemicals. So the others also provide uh, 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 agrochemicals, which they sell to their farmers in, within the communities. So we link them to the uh, suppliers of agrochemicals. We also have the private sector which buys the produce that is produced by the farmers um, and also the seed. Our others have been able to sell to some of the commercial seed companies. One of them is Afri Seed. Uh, in terms of selling the pigeon pea, we have sold pigeon pea to, the, to Afri Seed. Uh, then we have those um, private sector which buys the grain. Uh, the farmers under the ADAs, under the ADAs, they are the ones who buy the seed and also uh, sell their grain to the others. So others bulk the grain and uh, they sell to the private eh? traders, grain traders. So in terms of numbers of 
uh, ADAs. When we started some time back, we started with 40 ADAs. And um, by the time ADI was coming, we had 36. Four of them had dropped voluntarily. So with the assistance from ADI, AIDI, we increased that number by 304 others. Currently, we have 340 others across Eastern Province, which is Eastern Zambia and Greater Zambia. Uh, Greater Zambia has three districts, and you know, which part, I mean, Eastern Province has two districts. In terms of gender disaggregation, our others, the 340, we have 36% out of 340 others who are females and the rest that is 64 percent are males uh, let's talk about the roles that the ADAs play the first one is they are outgrow they, they, they are seed growers they grow soybean seed and pigeon pea seed as already explained and they sell that seed to the local farmers then they also act as last mile as last mile agents for seed companies, agrochemicals, and hematic storage bags, storage bag companies. Then they, produce, they facilitate the marketing of produce by creating and managing crop bulking centers, and they also participate in the selling of the same grain. And the other role that they play is that they play the, uh, the role of an extension agent uh, they conduct also, when they are trained, they also train their follower farmers. And they make farm visits to check that the farmers are following what they were taught. Then um, they also host demo plots. Um, the demo plots, uh, mega demos and the baby demos as stipulated by our donor summit using the protocol that has been stipulated by them. Then the ADAs also host hematic storage bag, uh, storage demonstrations. You will see some details concerning that. So in terms of numbers of the demo plots, currently we have 72, 72 mother demo plots and um, 272 baby demos, total is 344. That is just a picture that was taken recently in one of the districts in Lundazi, of Lundazi. Then let me talk about the quantity of seed that was produced and distributed in 2023. So production of this seed was done in the year 2022-2023 season because the Zambian rainy season uh, runs from about October or November to April under a normal rainy season. So the seed that was distributed last year was pre produced in the previous farming season. So in terms of numbers, um, we had 80 farmers that accessed pigeon pea seed. Then we, they accessed 195 kilograms of pigeon pea seed. The value of that seed was $345. Um, this came from 11 ADAs. You may be questioning why the numbers are so low. This is a crop that is relatively new, seemingly new in the region where it, we are promoting it. I can say in Zambia, this is not a common crop. So we are still struggling with the adoption. Uh, then the soybeans, um, the numbers that accessed the so I've been seed is 398 farmers. Then 
the total quantity was uh, 9,000, about 9.5 tons of seed, valued at $19,050. These numbers do not include the seed that was sold to companies or individuals outside the communities where it was produced. So 21 ADAs produced this seed. Uh, so in terms of seed access from companies, so the ADAs, you may wish to know that the ADAs are also linked, as I said earlier on, they are also linked to seed companies. So examples are Afri Seed, Seed Co, I mean Zam Seed and Kamano. Kamano, we are still discussing with them. Well, what I mean here is that uh, ADAs get seed from seed companies, which they sell as last mile agents for these companies, and they also they get a commission from that uh, from that uh, business. Uh, so in, in only two districts, Lundazi, and uh, yeah, only in Lundazi we had two ADAs who who sold seed on behalf of seed companies last year uh, for this current uh, uh, production season. So the quantity is that the, the figures are that the number of farmers that accessed the seed is 235. Quantity of seed that was accessed is about 1.2 metric tons, uh, valued at 3,494. So most of the companies we are having a challenge that most of the companies are not willing to release seed on credit. They want these uh, ADAs to buy cash. Then the ADAs were just coming from incurring a loss from, I can say they had poor income from the previous season because we had the, the rains uh, during that season were torrential and most of the soybeans suffered from the disease called the rust. And the, what happened thereafter, the prices of soybeans in Zambia was very low. Government never bought and the, the prices just dropped. So when ADAs are producing seed, as I indicated that we will collaborate with SCCI, who undertake inspection at various stages, of seed production, then each ADA, uh, they are responsible for paying the fees that are required uh, when producing seed. So seed registration, which is at $1.8, $1 and seed seller's license, they pay on their own. This is $9.44. Uh, $9 um, as seed growers, they faced a challenge at one point in terms of procuring uh, early generation seed because uh, Zari was not willing to be dealing with individual farmers, but they would want they wanted to be uh, they were asking to be dealing with the um, farmers in a group, and also they had the challenge of procuring and accessing packaging materials. So they came together and formed two cooperatives. So in Chipata, the cooperative is called the Chika Seed Growers Cooperative, and the Lundaz, it's called Lucha Seed Growers Cooperative. So all the seed that they produce is marketed under the brand name of Chika Seed and the Lucha Seed. Um, we linked them also to other inputs uh, we market. So um, the first one is Kushe, Kushe, which supplies the hematic bags. This is one of the technologies that is being promoted under this initiative. And um, just last year, before the current farming season, uh, 400 bags were sold by three other or four ADS uh, in 2023. Then um, uh, that was the, prior to that, we had conducted uh, some training of ADS 
this was after AID I had come on board. So we conducted a training in the hematic storage bags usage or adopt, um, technology. And um, after that, we embarked on creating awareness, demonstrating how this technology works. So last week, the past three weeks, we have been opening the bags. And that is the, the bags that were kept, that were loaded with the grain and kept by the pilot farmers that were selected. So the people you are seeing in the picture are some of the pilot farmers. And this was one of the ceremony at which it was the bags were opened. And people were able to see for themselves that the technology works, the grain was just intact. Then we also linked them to agrochemical companies like Sheni, Osho, ETG, and BSF. Then um, Sotec Laboratories of Lusaka also bought 150 kgs of pigeon pea. This is a new company that came on board to buy seed produced by the others. The table there just gives the details of how much or how many uh, hematic storage bags were sold. Then for produce marketing, Pigeon P is mainly bought by Sheni Agric Supplies, who we expect to now demand more Pigeon P because of uh, some help that he has received because of intervention of CRIS. Then Caritas Chipata also bought pigeon uh, soybeans from the ADS, from the farmers under the ADS. Other companies that bought were uh, 260 brands, um, Lamish Trading, and Anand Anando Agro, Agro Company. We, as the CRIS, uh, are putting up a structure you are seeing on the right hand side. Uh, this is the Manjanja Agri Hub, and the four ADAs are linked to this facility, which will be used for crop bulking, uh, farmer training, and agri technology demonstration. The structure is still under construction, and the, this is the stage at which it is. We have just roofed it. And we are looking for people that can assist us to complete it. So these are some of the beneficiaries that accessed seed that was produced by one of the ADAs in Ichipata. So the bags you are seeing, that uh, those are bags of soybeans seed. So ADAs give either give the seed on outgrower basis, they give their farmers whom they select themselves, they, then they recover at the time of marketing. They also sell cash within the communities and beyond. Uh, and they also sell to the seed companies. Um, I think this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Well, th th thank you very much. Thank you very much, James, for that uh, presentation and the story uh, we, we, you have told us from uh, early generation seed to what we see now is grain uh, being marketed. So it's, 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 it's a good story that has been told. Um, it, to the participants, um, attendees, um, you can write uh, your questions in the chat uh, in the chat box in the facility available there we i'm not sure whether this can be the, part, the attendees will be able to to speak as well we i think we can move if there is need we can move to to, to the other section but i think putting questions within the chat box is is, is good enough we can read those questions um as we wait for one or two burning questions uh, around the subject presented by James, I will take this time to present also Jafet. Jafet, welcome. You are around. We're missing you. Do you hear us, Jafet? Just uh, so we know you are on board. 
if you can unmute yourself and just please speak to us. Yeah, I can hear rings. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. All right, perfect. So, Jafet, I will introduce you to, to, to the team uh, that uh, has joined us on this webinar. So, you'll be happy to know that Jafet works for, uh, for Agra. Jafet is a young, optimistic, uh, very enthusiastic agricultural economist uh, dedicated to support agricultural transformation and food systems to catalyze and sustain positive um, changes with farming communities. He is working with AGRA as a program officer, officer managing and coordinating programs and investments falling into the portfolio of two things. One, inclusive market and trade and finance. Two, sustainable farming and digital, digital platform. Jaffet has accumulated more than 15 years of experience working with private sector and um, philanthropic uh, pools of investment. Jaffet holds a Master's of Science in Agriculture Economics from Cascade University from the United States of America, also a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture Economics and Agribusiness from Sokoyeni University of Agriculture in Tanzania, Jaffe has managed grants and investments with several donor funding, such as the BM, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, USAID, the USDA, and um, <clears throat> focusing on market systems development, capacity building, value chain, and development, partnerships, and business development service, um, among others. So we are uh, delighted to to have you uh, 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 together today. Um, now, as we let me just pick a few questions uh, that have been posted um, from the last presentation before we move to Jaffet's presentation. So, James, a question for you: um, Are the seed brands registered? Uh, somebody is saying uh, they missed uh, the maybe the presentation on the others uh, as extension um, agents. Uh, are these uh, just um, extension agents or entrepreneurs? I think you explained that, but you you can take the, the chance to redo that. And also, are they wholly trained by CRS? I know in Ethiopia, extension agents are called development agents. So this is a matter of differences in. Uh, in, in naming, but do, do you want to explain a, few, a little bit further whether it's wholly training by CRS or these have existed well before CRS? James, over to you. Well, these were trained by CRS, entirely by CRS. Of course, they may have received some training from somewhere, but uh, we are the ones who trained them in seed production and give it entrepreneurship. Okay. So right. that's so, what I think. Okay. In terms of the seed yeah. brands, we have not yet registered these the, 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 the brands. I think that okay. is something we need to work on now. Yeah. Okay. So so there is another question on uh, on on risk. Um, last year you said um, there was a problem. Everybody knows in Southern Africa the rust was a big issue. With soybean. And this year we are facing a terrible drought. So the question is, do you see a potential for crop insurance uh, for farmers? Yes, there is a potential for crop insurance. I think uh, everyone has been affected and people are already talking about insurance now that they've seen possibility of crop failure for this year. So I think that is something that we need to sensitize the ADAs together with their follower farmers so that they start doing that, ensuring their crop. Okay, I think let's move to our second presentation for, uh, and then uh, we, we have at the very end a question and answer session. So welcome Jafet, um, please can you give us the perspectives of um, Agra on, um, on the topic before us today? All right, thank you so much, Dennis, for this opportunity. I'm happy to connect you with colleagues. 
And please allow me to take you through the case study of leveraging VPA to strengthen the input market and the output market and in Tanzania in particular. And uh, this is through the focus of ADI that has been implemented in nine regions, which comprises uh, around 80 partners. And the actual is focusing on maize, rice, beans, and distributed on soya beans. Uh, Uh, allow me to start with a big quote uh, to underscore the importance of agriculture sector uh, from the president of Africa Development Bank. Rabbi. He said that the future billionaires and billionaires will not come from oil and gas rather than from agriculture sector. Uh, this is the real example because every one of us depends on uh, food on daily basis, and there is no one that who can smoke gas or drink oil every day. But however, everyone must eat food. So we see this is very important phenomenon, particularly in the agriculture sector. And we know most of the African countries will be in whoever comparative advantage when given in terms of ecological factors that allow uh, production of the value projects. Uh, despite the importance of this mm -hmm. sector, however, there are a number of challenges and uh, the bottlenecks that affect the agriculture sector, which is very common to everyone. And but I want just to pinpoint out, uh, and we mm -hmm. all know that in most of our countries, and I don't know in sub Sahara countries, mm -hmm. agriculture is the backbone of the economy that are highly dependent in terms of 30% of GDP. But also, the sector is contributing more than 40% in terms of export, not only that, but also in terms of employment. By most of sub Sahara countries, around 60 to 80%, the sector is contributing employment for the youth, male, and female farmers. Uh, there are a number of challenges within the sector. The first one is the no use of certified agricultural technologies, particularly seed and fertilizer, that are being contributed by high cost of, uh, of inputs in particular. But also we see the low productivity of different value chain that have been brought up together with a number of challenges, including the low adoption of these technologies, the low understanding by a magnitude of a small farmer in terms of how they can take for these technologies to increase their crop. Uh, similarly, we see the sector is highly affected with the climate change and they have posed a number of issues, particularly we see the emergence of new diseases, polar the pest and the disease are some of the risky that are affecting the sector. Uh, but as from the question that I heard before, we see that the sector is having a number of challenges, especially limited access to finance and crop insurance. When you try to compare the agriculture sector and the health sector, you see massive investment in the health sector with short companies. But in the agriculture sector, there are very few key players who are providing insurance in that sector. In infrastructure to rural areas, they are, plus in the use of mechanizations and other challenges, but also the post harvest that a big factor. Uh, toward the core of this call, in this study, we see the weekend efficient in terms of access to agricultural services, particularly extension services, whereby pharma, they have limited access to a number of uh, extension agents who can support them in terms of know-how, in terms of using different technologies. So, uh, the village-based advisor is coming because of the challenges which you see in terms of access of advisory services. And we know that uh, advisory services is uh, very critical for the smaller farmer to break the cycle of low productivity, but also in the reducing and eliminating poverty. Because we know this access to extension services is very critical in terms of ensuring that farmer they can use modern, they can use access information, but also modern technologies to improve crop yield. Uh, but also we know the extension services are among the rudimentary made of used globally to link furthermore to technologies, uh, finance, as well as link it to the side of the market. But now when we try to see the, in the big picture of Africa, we see that uh, uh, there, is, there is high extension to farmer ratio. In many of the countries we see that in one to 2,000 up to 10,000. I guess the recommended ratio of one to 500 and 700 depending on the local context. However, we see that Ethiopia a little bit uh, has improved in, in that area, whereby the extension to farmer ratio is one to three eighty six. Similarly, in South Africa, it's normally regarded that it is pretty very well from one to two fifty, but also to one to five hundred, five hundred. From the grassroots here in Tanzania, the research that has been conducted in twenty nineteen, 
it found that the average to farm uh, extension to farm ratio is 1,200. However, it is very, in the livestock crop subsector, we see some good improvement whereby it is 1 to 500, but in crop subsector, it is 1 to 1,000 as an, an average. Ideally, we see that the lower ratio is actually is very important to ensure that farmers have access to information and technologies to improve their crop yield. Now, uh, who are the VBAs? And we hear a number of names. Uh, some they call VBAs, village based advisor. Some they call community based advisor. Our uh, our colleague in CRS, they call like culture development agent. In West Africa, some of our countries, they call community based advisor. Some they call farmers. So these are just the name. But from our perspective, uh, VBA are self employed farmers who are trading with um, you know, the developer partner or private sector. And normally we meant them to take down the message to small farmer, uh, particularly through training, and they try to showcase through the different method, especially the methods. And from our perspective, uh, we normally build the capacity of the VBA uh, through expanding and showcasing different work opportunities that that can enable them to actually generate income generation activity through formal and informal ways. And we believe that uh, through partnership with the private sector, when you invest in the VBA model, they'll be sustainable and they'll be there to support farmer in terms of access to different technologies. And that ultimately that could enable and be support in terms of reducing the extension to farmer ratio. And in total activity, we are going to see that we are going to promote inclusive growth economy to improve the food system in Africa and worldwide. So, uh, in terms of the VBA approach, uh, we, we are struggling to ensure that at the end of the day, you are going to reduce the gap to ensure that uh, the farmer, the extension farmer ratio is between one to 500 or to 700 through the use of uh, a VBA in partnership with the key private sector and the other developer partner. Normally, in the main component that are included, uh, the first one we try to identify, first of all, but also support them in capacity building uh, in collaboration with other actor, other partners, but also giving them, we normally conduct a assessment, a brief and quick assessment in that particular geography to see how many extension officers are available in particular region, in particular ward in the village. And so that you can try to visualize in terms of the coverage and challenges that are facing, facing farmer in that particular area. Uh, similarly, we give a, so we try to expose them in terms of uh, uh, seeing is believing. Budget farmer normally in terms of transformative action, they learn better when they see. So we give them exposure in terms of the mega demo, baby demo, the mother demo. But also uh, support some digitization uh, through different platform. Uh, we have Mukulima Hub, uh, but also we have Bakalam Tendao. Those, all these uh, uh, different platforms that try to connect the, uh, the DBA, the Tuango Villa, the Farmer Label, and extension of the same general. And lastly, we try to impact them in terms of partnership with the private sector, especially the seed company, but also giving them the exposure in terms of how they can generate uh, business in the rural setups, rural entrepreneurship, market linkages, and other key players. So uh, I will focus in terms of the strategy because I already mentioned in terms of the challenges uh, that is uh, affecting the agriculture sector. But in terms of the strategy, we are trying to see how we can increase more awareness to small farmer on yielding his technologies through using different methods, particularly through the conduct of DB at the moment to reduce the extension of farmer ratio. Uh, we believe that uh, this, at the end of the day, they, it will enable to break the barriers between public and the private sector, and ensuring that th thousand farmers who are residing in rural areas, they be able to learn through practical, practical knowledge, but also through advisory service by the use of last and medical So. How are we, what is the, how, which process do we use in terms of uh, recruitment of the DBA? The first one, as I mentioned before, just conduct the quick assessment in particular geography, particular region, but to move to another step of engagement with the local government authority for selection of the representative, uh, which ensuring that the gender composition is, must be one of the prime factor. Then after identification of the particular personnel, it get exposed in terms of training, both theory and practical, 
particularly in terms of uh, producing uh, different variety of crops, variety crops in that particular setup, but also in terms of uh, issue regarding post harvest management, business uh, service, but also I try to look at some income generating activity in rural areas through entrepreneurship. Uh, as I mentioned, the practical uh, is uh, they are exposed in terms of the mother demo, baby demo, and baby demo. Then after that, we move to another step of monitoring and coaching for them, bearing in mind that we you know, also try to support with linkages with different companies, especially seed company. We did a good job with uh, Cidico, uh, but also Meru company, who are using some of the DBA with other avenues, which I'll mention later on. Later on, we, we are bringing in the issue of digitization. We, this is the very important as a lesson from COVID-19, whereby we see most of the things we try to digitize to reduce uh, for massive outreach, but also reducing the time that we can use in terms of physical mode. So the criteria and the characteristics of the big day. Normally we try to focus in terms of the youth and farmers in the rural setup who have just finished the basic basic education. But also we need to see how, how they are passionate about agriculture and they will be able actually to articulate clearly in terms of how they can communicate with farmer having received the particular key messages, but also making some commitment in terms of our ability to invest in uh, small businesses. But uh, one of the very important is uh, must be mm -hmm. by the farmer democratically. And normally the way we do is we just invite a big meeting in the village setup, which comprises of government, local government authority, whereby they try to maybe appoint out to maybe three to four people, depending on uh, the assessment which you need in terms of how many people are required, then they get elected democratically through voting. So from there, we move to next. So this exercise is very transparent to show inclusivity, but also to see how we can manage some social dynamics. But another characteristic to say, uh, the questions will be more respectful, honest, and trustful uh, by the farmer community, but also very important to see how they are willing to share information, to share resources that may be uh, planned to reach a certain farmer community. The gender is very critical in some of the social set local setup, but we are striving to ensure that at least the 40% in terms of selection should be comprises of the women. Willingness, but also need to see how we can allocate a little bit time. Since they are living in the rural setup, just to just give a little bit time in terms of the support from us in terms of the dissemination of improved technologies. So uh, I don't want to spend time here because this I thought is very uh, very clear to everyone in terms of the mission before. For the mega demo, we are planning to, uh, the square meter of 1,600, but for the mega, mother demo, is a half an acre. Uh, for the baby, normally it's the small packs of 50 gram that we normally would see the, the number of companies. Uh, when a particular seed variety has been released, now they want to test the market. We normally have this, this uh, small packs which get to support to farmers so that they can plant in alignment with their farm which they use to produce crops. So these are different uh, parameters which you normally know, we engage uh, most some of your people. We see that uh, working with the seed company, the money, they get uh, some commission through distribution of the seed, but also small packs. But also there's a number of companies who are working with the VBA in terms of uh, developing, developing demonstration plots, uh, but also conducting the farmer fields, they get some little bit of money to sustain their own them and the business. But also we have some few uh, who are getter. In West Africa, we have many in the pool of uh, aggregation and sale agent for the crops. But here from Tanzania, we are very few. Majority of the BBI are on the end of, on the end angle of uh, establishing of uh, rulership, but also aggregation of input demand. Uh, in terms of mechanization, we have some few, but actually most of them are working in terms of uh, providing operation uh, services, but also fabrication of uh, different farm equipment. But also in terms of ICT, we have the Wakala Mtadao, which normally try to bring and link uh, farmers and DBA with a certain cell agent, but also to extension that. So uh, these are some of the uh, pinpoints that we found when we found some of the DBA. When they within among of this one, they can get some little bit commission to sustain them in the business.
Uh, so uh, these are uh, uh, different avenues which actually uh, most of the DBAs are engaging, but also we are seeing the importance of bringing horticulture because we need them to sustain. Normally we see the in terms of crop cycle, normally for maize, our beans, our beans, just maybe six months, mm -hmm. six months, but we need to ensure that they, they can perform the catch sector. We are, so we are thinking aloud in terms of bringing horticulture because horticulture in terms of timeline, within three months can make some good money, but also to the time lag of six months, we need them to actually to control some of the uh, horticulture to improve their nutrition, but also to increase their income. So. In terms of on-farm, these are avenues and pathway that actually give uh, some of the majority they're engaging in terms of production of crops. As I said before, some they're working with the seed company in terms of the development and the management of demo crops as well as field, field days. They get some uh, benefits through that end. Some they normally they aggregate input demand from farmers, then they submit to Haber Gorilla who are given uh, through the payment of 50% but also distribution of small parks and other technologies. Without forgetting the normally we, we started working with the private company, especially the seed in terms of having the local input trade show. Actually for the seed company, this was very working. Actually it has increased itself for many of the company because we normally conducted once before the starting of the season. So that has been one of the instruments that has enabled seed company actually to penetrate in rural areas but also cementing knowledge to farmers in terms of different uh, varieties of the seed uh, and other crop potential services. Uh, their ownerships are among the pool uh, of or avenues for the DBA, uh, some agro shop, we see other units in the distribution. The spray service is little bit that's coming up. Uh, this is the model that has been working in the cotton sector. Uh, for for Agatha, actually, we see some of the DBA the highly respected with the former community, so they are taking it as among of the undertakings to ensure that they get some benefits. As I said, in terms of culture, we see in terms of nursery, sale of vegetable, fresh fruits, so grafting and budding. So these are some of the pathways which we uh, we envision that can support to be to stay on the game to support farmers, but also improve their life. As a I don't have to mention our colleague has mentioned from CRS in terms of our co-conservation, market judgment, those are areas. Maybe I can stress in terms of mechanization. Uh, mechanization, we are supporting them with uh, threshing services and connecting farmer, connecting with the farmer, but also are connecting them with some of the company, for instance, working with the poly machinery, who are normally supporting them with after service and maintenance, but also giving some capability in terms of how they can repair the machine without to move as far as this. Another element to which we are envisioning is coming also on board in terms of processing. We normally see this in normal intersection and PESA, TIGO, PESA, HALO, PESA, maybe from another country. Uh, those are being among the medium to, and which are actually embedded within a particular setup in rural areas to support the uh, business transaction. Both the animal feed also see how it's coming on board to support such an area, making sure that the big they're working. So uh, this is just the pathway. Normally we take the DBA, normally we take them as the farmer that after capacity building in some of the transition to agro dealer, while other normal we see some few are coming, are coming as master tenor. Master tenor, we have some very few actually in different regions, especially in Katavi and Bukwa. So this one, they are gaining high reputation from the community. Now you find some big, big farmer who are staying in the city. They give them the mandate to manage their plots, maybe 50 acres. They give them mandate from land preparation, uh, planting, crop management, hunting harvest. So we have some few actually, now they call themselves master chain and they get some good money throughout that area. On the left, you can see some of the people who have graduated. They, are, they, they have some fresh, provided fresh services, that they have agro shop. Uh, the picture below is the same kind of intervention which you normally conduct in terms of mm. how that expose them in terms of uh, practical learning, in terms of spacing, seeding, and the other related. Just to pinpoint a little bit in terms of performance for last year, uh, particularly on the area of the big game. Actually, we have a target to recruit 3,500 big game. However, at the end of last December last year, we were able to recruit 3,700. 796. So this is a big plus actually, and the, 
uh, we reduce the target actually for this year to ensure that those who are not being recruited, we have taken them to the phase of uh, coaching and monitoring to see the undertakings and how we can support them much better. But also in terms of demo posts, we usually we have a target 200, we are able to achieve that one. But very important, I just want to recognize the importance of AGI. Uh, when you see on the left down in terms of Agra 2.0 achievement, uh, this is just is a summary of people who are recruited and trained in different countries. And you see that Tanzania is leading in terms of having 19.74%, percent followed by Ghana, Nigeria, uh, so also Mali, Mali in Nigeria, the score was close by same. So uh, Tanzania actually is trying all the best way to reduce the extension gap, particularly with the of more BBA, but also try to uh, support partnership with other development partners, with the private sector to ensure that they're there. Uh, with the contribution from AJ actually, the target is moving because uh, we used it to have, before AJ, we have 60,000 plus BBA, but currently I think the number is ticket to 88,000 plus. So we really recognize ADI with the support actually that enables us to put more BBA. Now we are taking them to the phase of monitoring to ensure that they can support farmers better, but also support in terms of access to finance with the parliament in collaboration with the uh, financial financial form of investment with the banks and their MFI. I have a small case study here from uh, a youth known as Anthony Pangala. Actually, he was recruited on on, on some parts of the investment, and the, his core work was just uh, providing the threshing services. Uh, upon with our intervention, the field we found he just was with the ADI. We found he was working, however, not at the space that he was having. We found that some need, uh, some. Uh, uh, challenging in terms of it was not knowing in terms of uh, uh, post harvest management, uh, in terms of the how to train farmers in that aspect of post harvest management, but also how we can increase the market share of the farmer. So we took them in independent training because for the gap is okay, but we took them in detail in terms of post harvest management, and we took them another step of when you are doing training with the farmer, we take him on board and try to train farmer. So from there, I was able to gain more trust from farmers and actually I was able to reach uh, more than 300 farmers during the training. But also we connected with him with one of the local artisans who provided maintenance service and repair for the machine. And uh, when we were trying uh, up to, I think, November last year, we tried to see his progress. Actually, for last year, I was able to do a good number of threshing. He employed it for youth, actually. But also at the end of the day, we were able actually to finish more than 11,000 bags of maize and we were able to create around 14 million Tanzania shillings. When we try to remove some of the cost, you see that there you have 6 million. I cannot say this is a profit, maybe there are some of the costs that are not taken on board, but actually we try to see the figures of them. They're very promising that this is actually one of the means that can support the video to be on the game and support the family community. Okay, uh, Jafet, we can give you a few more minutes. We want uh, a little bit more time at the end for discussion. We are running out of time. Okay, okay. this is my last slide. Uh, how would uh, we enhance the sustainability of the DB model? We're working in different uh, geography and different countries in, in terms of how we can institutionalize the model. We, good, we see some good tracking in Burkina Faso, but also in Ghana, the type of development standard guidelines, procedure in terms of taking them on board so that the government they can take on board and support them and work with them. But also we are investing with a partnership with the private sector, especially the input company, the chemical company, the normal work together with them in terms of development of the demo plots, some products of soil testing, crop cut exercise for crop yielding. So those are the parameters they're working with the private company. But also, we are trying, we are seeing some of the, the development partners that try to be leverage the use of DBA through the, the reach in the community. For instance, we have helped us uh, in some of the geography, self achieving some of the geography by working with the DBA to reach the community through nutrition, health, health care, and the other, uh, and other parameter that are used to help with the, within the particular uh, project. Last year, we see an increase of trust between farmers and DBA. We find some local setter, the farmer, they tend normally, they tend to trust more VBA than the newcomer. So with that aspect, normally 
when the seed company want to approach a certain community, you know, but the asking is the DBA with extension officer, then the working collaborator. But also we see a good traction with the government extension ID. They were able to recognize that the DBA that contributed to the role in terms of supporting farmer with a technical role. So thank you so much. I think that's the my end Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jafet. Uh... For, for, for this uh, narrative on VBAs. Uh, we just had the <clears throat> narrative on um, the others. So we, we see similarities and probably there could be some differences, but uh, it's good to, to get a parallel discussion on of others and VBAs. Um, th so thank you very much for, for, for preparing uh, this presentation. Um, there, there are a few questions already uh, online. Um, I, I could read some of them out. Um, yeah, somebody is saying your presentation is very informative. Well done. The, the question, Pascal, is what is the incentive for Enver to be to participate as a VBA? Any unique incentives that you gave or? If you can elaborate on that. Jafet? Jafet, are you there? Does anybody hear me? Is it my... Hello, Regis. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I, I can hear you now. Yeah, so can you repeat the question? I was plugging uh, power to the computer was running out of charge. Ah, okay, we, we, we had uh, momentarily missed you. Okay, so the question is, uh, what is the incentive for uh, someone to participate as a VBA in, in, in Tanzania? Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, the incentive... Uh, sometimes we normally support them with the seed money in terms of how they can support farmer with access to technologies, particularly seed and fertilizer. So we don't give give them cash rather than we try to ask him in terms of the local setup where he is residing, then try to put some few infrastructure that can support him and uh, enable him to start the business. One. The second one, uh, linkage with the seed company, whereby they are given some assignment, as I mentioned, in terms of the global demo plots distribution of small parts, some movement, maybe some commission. But also we are taking them to the level of Haba Godila, whereby they have some mutual uh, relationship. Some of them they are known with the, some of the Haba Godila. We take them in connection with the local government in terms of how we took them in, from the equipment selection by the local community. So from there, they're given some consignment of the seed and fertilizer and other products so that they can sell and later and pay later. So it's all the some, some of the people I can mention for now. Ah, okay, so we 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 learned about this also with others for Zambia, where you, they had access to 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 early generation seed to now apply that. So yeah, good. Now th there is another question. You 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 gave statistics on um, the ratio of farmers to the VBAs uh, with farmers and there was good ratio. Actually, the writer says a low ratio uh, for VBAs in some countries such as uh, Ethiopia. But the, the, the other flip side is food security is still a challenge despite a fairly good um, ratio there. So the question basically is, the, is it the problem of the, the, the VBAs or it's, it's a general system that we are dealing with that is failing farmers? Uh, there is no a single like, single answer for that. As I pointed out, in terms of putting the big picture, in terms of the challenges we see in the agriculture sector. So, uh, in terms of food security challenges in Africa, country, we see a number of challenges. Uh, the productivity there is still very low. Access to technology is very low. We see access to finance is a big problem. Access to crop insurance are big challenges. The calamities which are coming with the climate change with another big factor. For instance, we see the normally the movement go to the level political. We see the closure of the closure, ad hoc ban, closure of border between country to country. So the number of issues of clearly. So our vision just is to try to eliminate that are controllable within our level. Mm. All right. So 
a yeah it's it's great uh, to, to to have that that perspective um i think we we have representation from different countries we have uh, parallels also of others of vbas we will uh, welcome insights from the participants uh, the attendees as well um what, what have been the uh, lessons from different countries now there, there's another question here on um the commission to VBA is especially when they're dealing with the private companies. Um, the writer says things that um, that will affect basically the, 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 the way the technologies are, um, are basically given to farmers. If, if one company is giving a good commission, then obviously there is bias in terms of is the technology good or not? It doesn't matter because there is a little bit of energy given to to to, to the VBA, so to speak. So, what what's your take there? Have you seen um, some technologies spreading faster, or there is more incentive for the VBAs to 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 run with a certain technology? In other words, in terms of fairness to a technology, the, the way we push technologies to farmers, are there some technologies that have got an unfair advantage of others in terms of incentives given by the owners? How do you respond to that? Ah, that's tricky, but uh, from working with a number of companies, normally farmers, they learn best when they see through their eyes. That's why you say seeds beginning. So we normally set a number of demonstrations. Let me take an example of maize. We have more than 15 companies with different varieties of maize. So in particular, we take to tend to develop all these varieties in particular sectors. So at the end of the day, farmer they see which one is more can work best from the local sector, from the ecological area. So the next is of farmer they tend to require a particular uh, a particular technology seed variety. So for VBA normally, they try to ask more for that that has been demanded because that is a uh, farmer driven model. So, in terms of fairness, yes, as the performance of the seed, those which are not, does not perform well, farmer tend a little bit to reduce in terms of uptake. Those who are performing better, they tend normally to take up. But also, in terms of the fairness, our government has set up uh, the, uh, the seeding price for maize, uh, maize varieties. So, for the commission is being brought with the company that if you be able to sell an XC metric term, your commission will be this amount. So that does not affect the farmers in terms of planning that it can increase the cost of the farm. Oh, thanks. Mm. Okay, good. I, I, I guess, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the general discussion and Questions and answer session, and we 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 there, there should be also questions um, that have not been uh, given to James uh, uh, earlier on. So we, we are free to 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 put this in the Q and A section or also on the chat. Um, let me read something that is here already. So how do, how, how do you think we can sustain this approach of VBAs or I would want to also say others uh, outside uh, an active funding uh, ecosystem. Let's say outside the, the current projects we have, uh, outside the EDI, uh, how do you think this can be sustained? Actually, it's both both uh, James and, um, and, and, and Jaffet. You, you can respond from the perspective of others and uh, from the perspective of VBAs. Okay, I can go first. So yes. for the other model, whatever they do, they make a profit. When they produce seed and sell, they make a profit. When they get seed from a seed company, there is a commission that they get. Even when they aggregate the produce, they also get a profit. So. We take that as a, a motivation for them to continue doing whatever activities that they are doing beyond the life of the project. So that's what uh, our plans are. Okay, 
Uh, your perspectives, uh, Jafet? Yeah, as James have said, actually that is very true, but also we need to see how we can strengthen partnership with the private sector and the other development partner. Uh, since we are working on project basis, when this is live out, actually we need to cascade information and develop a position of this model to other development partners so that they can use those DPA and the other as a conduit to reach their community. Because for them, at the end of the day, they found that they're highly respected, they're highly proud, so they can, if, if that is among the incentive and should take them forward. Secondly, as I mentioned, in terms of uh, uh, creating different avenues for them to get some money and commission. As I mentioned, horticultural, this is just within three months, uh, make money, so we need to bring proceeds so that it can sustain throughout it. And lastly, we need to work closely with the government to sell the value proposition of the VP. How they are support the community, how the community, the community appreciate their services, so that they can recognize actually and try to take some mm. effort to incentivize them so that they can support the extension Thank you. All right, thank you, Christabel. I'm not sure I'm, we we started a bit late, a little bit late. I'm not sure how much time we we have, but um, probably we are going towards the, the the end of the webinar. I mean, there is still one question here, which is. Uh, yeah, dynamics of politics and, and um, community engagements. Okay. So in some countries, political parties then use this village, uh, use this to mo mobilize their people in the in terms of their political agenda. So how do you separate this? How do, do you see this as a problem? Um, the, the way you want to work with uh, others, VBAs, and the political dimension comes in. Have you? found any problems so far? As, as for the others, we have not had any problems regarding that. But um, when we started the, the work of constructing that structure that I showed you, there was someone who, was, who wanted to start interfering, but uh, a council actually. But uh, yeah, apart from that, we've never had any experience of uh, uh, political interference. Okay, okay, that's fine. And then uh, this is interesting one. Uh, we we want uh, the VBAs to be an entrepreneurs, and so uh, how many of them have graduated from a very uh, low starting point to be agro dealers as well? Do you have any examples? Any success stories? So for, for the others, we, we have a few examples about yes. uh, four people that started uh, so, from the bottom, James, but right James, now... Just, they... James, just hold on. There's somebody who is not muted. Please, can you mute yourself? There is some background noise. Okay, James, please go ahead. We have a few examples of people that... Uh, and now they managed to build shops that they are using for selling the, their seed and also the seed that they get from seed companies. Um, they are also selling some agrochemicals on behalf of, uh, which they get from, the, from companies that supply them with those. Uh, right now their businesses seem to be doing not so bad. They are, at least they've moved from where we got them. Yeah, that's all right. Good, well done for, for this presentation. I, I don't see the, the the chat is no longer very active, which means uh, I think we are exhausting the, the, the questions. Uh, I, I think uh, at this juncture, let me take this time to Thank our presenters, um, Jafet uh, Leza, if I am saying it correctly, and James Ngulube, um, for preparing uh, for, for this webinar. Very informative. I've seen comments uh, in the chat that uh, the participants have really enjoyed listening to both of you. And we, we hope uh, to get more uh, in the future when we call upon you as well. And uh, hoping for the best for the next um, in the series of webinars for, for this uh, ADI program.
Uh, with this, uh, I want to thank all of, all of you for attending and uh, wishing you all the best, uh, you know, whatever you're doing. Thank you very much. Um, for my co-presenters, uh, uh, do we have anything else today? Uh, no, Doc, I would just like to thank all the participants for joining in. We are grateful. And just to let you know that this is a standing webinar. We have uh, a webinar every month discussing the implementation of uh, the project. Our next webinar is on the 29th March, same time. Please do join us and we'll be uh, discussing a different topic. We'll, 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 we'll extend the invitation once we are set. Thank you very much. Over to you, Prof, to close it off. Otherwise, uh, from me to you all, thank you very much for spending your afternoon, your morning, your evening with us today. Uh, long live to Edai. Bye, everybody.